Welcome every, every, everybody. Um, this presentation is about the status update of the Vulcan uh, project. Uh, my name is uh, Jeroen Bakker. Uh, I'm developer and uh, one of the module owners of the EV and viewport uh, module inside Blender. Uh, today I want to uh, tell you about the main reasons why we moved to Vulcan. I will be giving something about the project timeline and the milestones. And we will go over several um, technical challenges that, that I uh, got uh, when starting on this journey. And most of those are not that obvious as you think. Um, when the presentation is over, there is some time uh, left for questions and answers. Uh, but we will start with a history lesson of OpenGL. Um, OpenGL is a graphics library that was created by Silicon Graphics. Uh, Silicon Graphics is a hardware manufacturer um, that created workstations for graphical use cases back in the 1990s and the 1980s. Um, they also provide the 3D accelerator cards. That was how they were called back then. Uh, their high-end GPU had 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, 104 could be used for texture memory. The rest was used by the driver. And it could handle 48 bits of integer colors. Uh, so 16 bits per channel. So no alpha. Um, and in OpenGL 1.2, they also uh, added the texture mapping and uh, per fragment lighting to, uh, to, to, uh, to their uh, API. Accelerator cards became much more mainstream. They got in home uh, com com computers and they were used for gaming. Games had different requirements and they pushed for uh, programmable sh sh shaders. The ab uh, programmable sh shaders is the ability to write a program that could be run in the, on the GPU and used to alter the vertices and the fragments. We know them, of course, as vertex and fragment shaders. Uh, since until, well, uh, let's go. OpenGL 3.3, um, the shader-based uh, pro programming model didn't fit well with the earlier fixed pipe, uh, pipeline uh, programming model. Um, and in order to fix that, they uh, created a new programming model and that was called Core Pro, pro Profile. So often you, you see from, okay, this is OpenGL Core Pro Profile, that means that it is a different programming model this programming model was available next to the, uh, the, the, the uh, previous programming model. And the responsibility from the, the, the developer to not mingle between those two. Otherwise, dragons appear. G GPUs got much uh, faster and got more memory. Uh, eight gigabyte became normal. Uh, internal bottle, bottlenecks uh, shifted towards the bandwidth. Uh, how fast could you get the data on your uh, GPU memory to the, all the different cores and, ex and execute the program you want? Uh, Op OpenGL 4.3 mainly focuses on improving the per per performance and flexibility uh, by introducing compute shaders. Uh, adding more efficient texture for, uh, for formats, adding texture compression and mani manipulation. In the upcoming blend of 4.3, uh, 4.0, sorry, <laughs> uh, OpenGL 4.3 will be the minimum requirement uh, for uh, uh, starting Blender. OpenGL was originally designed for GPUs for it with around 128 megabytes and memory run and running on a host system with only a single core. And using a non-programmable uh, pipe, uh, pipeline. Uh, 
if something goes wrong. Nowadays, it has two different programming models. Both are still supported in order to, to run the other uh, application. OpenGL also has a lot of extensions. Most of those extensions we are created by, by, by a vendor and focus around how they understood the problem. Uh, similar extensions by different vendors we are cre created. And under the umbrella of uh, the Kronos group, efforts were made to, st to standardize those different uh, uh, extensions into a single standard, resulting into a new standard, uh, the typical problem. Drivers might not have implemented the standard one, uh, so applications should still support the older ones of the vendor-specific ones. The specifications of the extensions, those are written in a human readable change upon the original specification. That's fun. They could conflict with uh, each, each, each other and it was hard to read and understand what they actually wanted to, uh, what they actually do. Here's an, let's see. Here's an example I got um, last week. For the people I was working on getting spare V cap capabilities in OpenGL. And this is uh, such a uh, specification of the extension. Where it uh, starts with uh, uh, all the dependency it has. Okay, I'm influencing all these other extensions. And in the end, it tells you from, okay, get the specification, rip out the, those pages and those uh, uh, lineas, replace that with this one. And if you then read it, it's what we want you to read. It is really, uh, to me, a diff. This also puts a lot of weight into the GPU vendors uh, when writing OpenGL drivers. Uh, due to the complexity of the drivers and mi misunderstanding of the standards, bugs could appear and they often uh, stick around. Uh, it normally takes around one year be between uh, a bug being detected and the driver with the fix of the bug being available to, uh, to users. During that time, uh, we have to add a workaround to Blender to make sure that th th that specific driver is handled differently. And that also means that in the Blender code base there's quite a lot of workarounds. Kronos, um, one, uh, one of the... Kona started um, the next generation OpenGL initiative in order to fix those, those issues that I mentioned and many, many, many others. Uh, vendors, they um, were more and more focused on, similar, on, on adding more sim similar features with similar uh, solutions. Um, they were also general, there was also a general consensus uh, about the current bottlenecks and the future G uh, GPU developments. The idea became to scrape away the high level graphics API, which OpenGL was, and uh, make a more detailed specification, very strict, and give the power to the application developer on how to use it. When the, when the specification becomes more strict, uh, it's also the possibility to uh, perform driver conformance testing. 
So the, all the different drivers between different vendors, uh, they uh, get into a process, and at the end of the process, they know they are compatible with each other. If we, if we would name such a project, we would call uh, the, the, uh, the EV and viewport module would call it OpenGL Next. But the uh, initiative became up with a different name, and they called it Falcon. I don't consider Falcon to be an API. An API where you can pro program ag uh, against. It is more an ecosystem. It starts with how the specifications are written. There's a single online specification that is written in a testab testable manner. Let's oh, this is not I'm going to I think it's not being uh, for this um, um, with a test testable form uh, everything that you can do with uh, API is uh, is is uh, uh, really strict strict strictly written and it tells you exactly how stuff is going is 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 working and uh, yeah, th 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 that makes it possible to uh, do the conformance testing. There are also the extensions are also included into uh, the specification. You can download the specification um, uh, without the extension, with all the extensions that were that are already standardized or with all the extensions that are available there in by, uh, by all the vendors. And that is one single document where everything is done, so all the diffs are applied from the extensions, making it much easier to understand and develop against. Due to the testability of the specification, uh, drivers can also run validation tests. But um, usage val val validation, how does an application use the Vulkan specification, that's not part of the runtime. So in OpenGL, you uh, could do anything and you got, uh, got back invalid arguments. In Vulkan, you can't get it. Or your system crashes or whatever. whatever. But during development, um, there are a lot of tools that help you with it. During the, the, the development, you can install a validation layer, and that validation layer will, will point out that that will uh, fit between uh, the application and the Vulkan driver, and that will do all the uh, uh, vali validation testing for, for, for you. So, because the Vulkan specs is so strict, and the drivers are validated, um, it really means from during runtime you don't need to do the validation, which increases per, per, per performance, of course. But it also means that the error codes um, of the Vulcan is more from, okay, it works, I'm out of memory. Those two kind of uh, error codes you get. Uh, Vulkan is also shading language neutral. Uh, G, G, everyone is talking about the GLSL lang language, but it, it's not really a language. It's a lot of different dialects that look the same. Actually, they're quite different. Um, uh, Vulkan uh, wanted to, uh, uh, to, to, to solve that by from, okay, we're only going to support SPRV, which is a binary uh, for, uh, for, uh, for format, and give the application developer the, uh, the freedom to choose the shading language that they want to use. Do you want to use GLSL? 
and if they do you want uh, if they are going to use uh, G G GLSL then here you have the really tightly strict version of GLSL that we support it's just one because the application is compiling it it's not a vendor uh, decentralized compilation anymore but we, you can also exchange the uh, the uh, GLSL with HLSL or another other higher level shading language. And then we get into from okay, we are now in a lower level APIs. So memory manager is, management isn't part of the Vulkan uh, driver. Memory management is the responsibility of the application. Okay, that's something interesting. I want to go uh, over the, uh, the, the history a bit of, of the Vulcan project within Blender. The reasons why in Blender we want to migrate to Vulcan isn't performance. It is platform stability. Each year, uh, we are adding work, work, work routes to the Blender code base, and it takes around one uh, one week to one month to develop those work, work, work rounds and validate that we didn't broke any other platform. Um, when Vulkan was introduced, most fan, uh, vendors were quickly focusing into, on, on, onto uh, Vulkan and ignoring that they also had an uh, OpenGL uh, stack to maintain. So the OpenGL stack, uh, the quality of the OpenGL stack went down. We received more bugs. Uh, the vendors are cur currently solving that by uh, wrapping the OpenGL co uh, calls on top of Vulkan or, di on, or DirectX, which is then from, from their point of view, we only have to solve one, uh, one, one part, that's, that's the Vulkan part, uh, but it also uh, adds the complexity that some features in OpenGL aren't compatible with Vulkan. So it's always um, a, ch a challenge to get OpenGL working. <coughs> the second reason that is uh, new uh, G uh, GPU features are not uh, available in OpenGL. If we want to use hardware ray tracing or we want to use mesh shader or any other feature that, uh, that is uh, modern, you can't. You just can't with OpenGL. You have to use Vulkan. And hopefully, in, in, at, 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 at last, we will get some per, per performance improvements, but it is not out of the box. We have to do a lot of stuff uh, for, 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 for that in order to comply to the way how Vulkan will be, uh, uh, can run uh, the drawing of, the, of Blender uh, uh, in an optimized ma manner. Um, any, um, yes, oh, mouse is there. Uh, for, for Vulkan to, uh, to, to, uh, to draw something on the screen, you have to um, create a, a, a recipe, a, a, a recipe they call it a pipeline. That pipeline uh, that is then loaded in, on, the, on the GPU and you pro provide the data to draw it using that, uh, that, that recipe. Um, that's different than how uh, Blender works. And um, I will come back to this on a later stage in the presentation. Vulcan project started around uh, 2019. Uh, we, uh, we encapsulated all the OpenGL calls that we had in, in the different areas of Blender in, uh, to a central component, which we call the GPU module. 
Um, at this point, it was only allowed uh, to use any G uh, GGL code inside the GPU module. There was also an, an initial prototype of a Vulcan back uh, context, uh, but it wasn't able to draw anything on the screen. It could create a context and that's, that's it. But it was a, f uh, a starting point for the future developments. For the encapsulations, we created an, uh, a lot of abstract uh, classes, which uh, in the end you could uh, uh, create an, a concrete version from, and then uh, your GPU could work. So for the Vulcan pro uh, project, we should just implement those classes and we would be ready, right? Sadly, for the Vulcan project in two 2021, uh, the priority shifted um, towards EV Next. A lot of uh, work went in, in, into that, into the asset uh, browser and the texture painting project. So the Vulcan project in 2021 only received uh, some minor up, uh, changes, n not really noteworthy. But in 2022, Apple worked on adding the Metal uh, GPU backend to Blender. They used the same context, so they implemented the concrete classes on, uh, in, inside the GPU module and they fixed the API where uh, it uh, could be Im Im improved, maturing the, uh, the API. And that's something that would benefit the Vulcan project as well. Also during this time, I started convincing people uh, from uh, what that we actually should invest on the, in the Vulcan uh, GPU back, uh, uh, backend, uh, resulting in, in, a, in an uh, official commitment from TAN um, that I would be working on this project and became one of the main developers. Um, and the project became one of the main developments for, the, for 2023. Looking at the task that needed to be done, um, we looked at from, okay, what's a realistic goal for the project? Uh, we target Falcon 1.2, not 1.3. The, re the reason for that is that most of the GPUs that we currently support also support uh, Falcon 1.2. So there would, wouldn't be that much of a uh, difference between uh, platform support. We support Windows and Linux. Uh, the official, uh, the initial uh, prototype th that we uh, did also supported uh, Apple devices, uh, but it is too hard to uh, to maintain as the as it, it is not fully uh, Vulcan compliant. Um, and from performance point of view, we wanted to be as close as possible to OpenGL that we have at, 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 at uh, currently. Uh, we know that we need to do several iterations to get to that uh, speed, but uh, yeah, those were um, things that we back then think, uh, thought from that duo. I looked at the approach that uh, Apple did when, when they did the uh, metal back, uh, back, backend implementation and quickly found out that I would not follow the same approach. Their approach was uh, to implement every class, make sure that everything works, and then uh, at the final stage of the project, we can start Blender and we can see that we did a good job. Uh, that's nice, but that's not how I want to work. I want to work with small steps, uh, being able to test every step that, that, that I take. And therefore I uh, looked at from, okay, what's the, qu the quickest step to, uh, to, to, to do? And the quickest step was to get compute shaders working. Uh, Blender already had uh, a unit test for com com compute shaders. 
Uh, but before we can actually use compute shaders, we need to do the uh, OpenGL, uh, the GLSL to spare V uh, cross compilation. And we need to have some basic memory management, otherwise we can't do anything. Uh, so the first task was uh, to get that up, up and running. And afterwards, uh, we extended that uh, using a, a unit test to, uh, to move forward towards and uh, to uh, implement the graphics pipe, pipeline. Uh, the project team, basically, uh, most of the time is, is just me. Uh, Bastian is uh, is uh, uh, acting as an admin uh, in the in the project, which means that he will be uh, looking at uh, at the project and see from okay it it, it uh, uh, depends on other areas of Blender, so they need to be informed or uh, decisions need needs to be made. And Cleur Moore, with his uh, amazing uh, uh, experience of uh, GPU development. But there was also some com community people involved. Most noteworthy was Kazachi. At the beginning of this year, he already presented a Blender version, which run on the Vulkan backend. And he's still uh, working on, on, on that branch. And we learned a lot from, uh, from, 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 from him. H how did he approach uh, the, his, his, his project? What kind of uh, uh, challenges did, did, did he make? And it was really an, an inspiration for, for us to see from how we could uh, design some of the, uh, the features that we, the parts of the, of the Vulcan backend so we can landed into main. So where are we now? In the beginning of October this, this year, uh, we added the Vulcan backend as an experimental option in, uh, to Blender 4.1 alpha builds. The Vulcan backend will not be available in the release yet. Uh, we do this to get some, f some feedback from, okay, does it start on my co co computer, or did we miss something uh, that we didn't know about? Uh, during the development, I test uh, the Vulcan backend in 20 different uh, uh, computer configurations, but there are thousands out there in the world. I might not have covered them all. And it's very easy to, uh, to, to test, even in Steam. Every, every day a new version of Blender is uploaded to Steam. You don't have to, uh, to stick to the release versions. And we, you can just add from, okay, GPU backend Falcon. Then it's installing. And you can start Blender. It's just Blender. Yeah, but it's just OpenGL, so. Or is it? No, it's Falcon. <laughs> That's the current state of the Falcon backend. So we have a running Blender. Um, but we aren't there yet. Some of the bigger Blender features are not working yet. Uh, EV, EV Next, uh, Cycles. Um, they, they use GPU features that we haven't impl implemented. Yeah, EV uses really advanced rendering tech, uh, tech, uh, techniques, uh, which we are handling one at a time. Uh, for cycles, sharing memory between CUDA and Vulkan, that works differently than we anticipated. 
it works the other way ar ar around, where cycles needs to allocate the Vulcan textures. And that used to be, and the uh, current cycles does that the other way around. Development currently focuses on stability and uh, features, and not yet on perf per performance. It is better to do the performance part in the end, as we have all the features in, 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 in place, and we know what needs to work together. Doing those developments from start would, li would lead to many re uh, rework at the end of the, of the project, which we don't want. Eventually, the focus on, will shift on performance. Um, and after the performance is uh, similar to the OpenGL back, back end, we will hand, hand, hand over the project to the uh, uh, EV and uh, viewport module, which are the same people. And this would also select and uh, make it possible to, that the Vulcan backend will be available in a released version of Blender. When we are there, we will select a version, not now. <laughs> so this was the status up update of the uh, Blender uh, Vulcan backend pro uh, project. And now I want to continue and check on some of the gotchas that we might cop, uh, come, come across when we uh, work on Blender. You don't need to uh, be an expert uh, in Vulkan when you to, to start a project. Um, basically, it is my first Vulkan project and I took something like, Ma, let's migrate Blender to Vulkan. In the next sections, I go over some of the of 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 the of the gotchas that that I uh, came came across, which I was aware or wasn't aware or didn't fully understand when I started the, the project. And let's see from what we can learn from uh, from uh, from that. <coughs> An area which is often taken for granted is memory management. In Vulkan, you can allocate two types of memory. You have images, and during the allocation of the image, you already define, okay, it has this many uh, di dimension, it uses this pixel format, it has a layout, ignore that for now, uh, but it also has a usage. You have to identify, I'm going to use this image in this manner. For buffers, that's the second uh, re re resource type. You, you have something simpler, except that buffers are not typed to, uh, to, to, to a data type, uh, but it has a usage. When performing um, uh, allocation on the, on, on in, in Vulkan, you have to take into consideration the uh, physical layout of the GPU. The GPUs have texture memory, uh, can have a, ca a cache unit, uh, might not, has GPU cores. But how are they uh, physically attached to each other? That makes sense. In Vulkan, you can query from, okay, what kind of memory heaps do I have? Uh, I did uh, check from an, a an AMD Vega G G GPU and I got a list of four memory heaps back, um, which has some visibility from the host. Am I accessible from, 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 from the host or not? But same from, uh, from the, uh, from the G uh, GPU. Some memory is just not accessible from uh, your host system. So in order to upload uh, memory like an image to, to that, that part of the, of, the, of the memory, you first have to upload that to a part which is visible by both, by both the host and the GPU, which can then be uh, copied towards the host not host visible part of the texture memory. 
most of the time, uh, GPUs, uh, typical G G GPUs, have a small part of memory which is used for that data trend and trend transfer. But that can differ per system. Also, the performance from, from how fast can you write uh, to that, uh, that part of memory or read back to, to that par uh, memory, that can differ. So the choices that, uh, that you have to make during the um, uh, allocation of the, of, the, of the memory is really important for the final performance that you get. Gladly, large part of the problem is, a co is, is really common, and there are li li libraries out there that, that exist that can help you impl implement this part. The Vulkan Memory, memory uh, Manager is, um, is widely used in gaming and applications and tutorials every, uh, everywhere to solve this uh, problem. It solves most of the problems, but you still have to, uh, to uh, say from, okay, I'm going to use this, mem uh, this, this, uh, this texture in this way, so please select the right uh, memory for you. Now let's allocate a depth texture using an OpenGL uh, compatible data for, uh, format. 32-bit, uh, where 24-bits are used uh, to store the depth, and 8-bits that can be used as a stencil buffer. And we want to use this uh, as a frame buffer attachment only. Now, NVIDIA, success. Intel, success. AMD, not supported. So let's talk about data formats. AMD doesn't support any depth 24-bit texture for, for formats. Uh, everywhere it says false. In Vulkan, every combination between a data format, its usage, and this layout is optional. So vendors, own, vendors typically only support the, uh, the, the data format in, in, in a way where it is also being supported by the actual silicon on the, on the GPU. If a vendor uh, says from, okay, uh, I have to uh, use less space on the physical space on the GP GPU, it can remove some of those silicon and then it's not supported in Vulkan. Games and tutorials mostly select the combination that are widely supported. Uh, for Blender, this is a bit harder because we also have add-ons who actually rely on uh, those texture for, for, for formats. So we always need to add uh, a fallback for any texture format out there. Uh, it's not that hard. So far I found out that mainly the 24-bit texture formats or the three-channel uh, texture formats are not uh, well supported, but you always have 32 bits or the uh, four-channel texture formats which you can use. Even when textures are, are supported, it might still not uh, support every usage. Blitting, for example, is a special hardware feature um, that can copy between different texture for, uh, for formats, applying some scaling to it and, and, and filtering. Blitting already existed in, in uh, typical home computers in the 1980s, so it's really old technology. Uh, but in this case, we're able to blit uh, from, to, to, to use the texture format as a blitting source, but not as a blitting target, because it has the blit source bit, but it hasn't have a blit destination bit. If you look at, <coughs> uh, 
uh, if you look at uh, other cases like uh, like uh, this one, uh, there are also texture for uh, data formats that cannot be supported by a texture, but only as a buffer. And then even uh, it can't be used as a storage buffer or a uniform buffer, only as a vertex buffer. So there's quite some uh, some things. Uh, in uh, when when you create a texture or a buffer that you have to take into consideration when uploading data the data must be written in exact the same format that's no problem for data formats that also natively natively supported by uh, the CPU like a float or an in 32 bit but what about how formats or encoded formats or really specific GPU formats? So Blender has to convert uh, the data it wants to, uh, to store in those te textures uh, by uh, themselves. I added, we added a function that can convert any host buffer to a device buffer during the the uh, trans uh, during the upload or to the GPU to save some uh, cycles. Otherwise, you would first do a conversion loop and then an upload loop. Uh, this one does that in the, in the same go between all the different texture for uh, for, for for formats. For float conversions. Uh, we looked at available li libraries, like you have to, uh, some uh, some libraries that really s uh, are uh, dedicated to uh, to uh, a single float format, like the half uh, uh, data type, or you have uh, libraries that are really generic, which you can use in any case, and but adds a lot of overhead. We uh, use some uh, C++ uh, C++ templating uh, where we uh, can generate the co conversion uh, function on the fly when, when we need it and still uh, be fast, so something in between. Um, something that we also do uh, here is that we clamp the value if it doesn't fit on the texture format. In OpenGL, if you upload an, uh, an, uh, a value that doesn't fit in a half uh, data type, uh, it gets an infinitive uh, value, which will show really inc incorrect renders. Uh, we solve that normally by clamping it first to the, the, to the maximum value that, that, can, that fit in that, uh, that format and then upload it. But because we do the, the conversion at the same time as the upload, we also do, can do at the clamping uh, to that same pro process. So it will be loaded to the CPU once and will, will be converted and clamped and then sent to the GPU in a single go just to increase the performance. In the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that uh, the performance of Falcon uh, relies on the, on, the, on the recipes you could reuse. These recipes, those are stored in pipelines. Falcon has two kinds of pipelines, the compute pipeline and the graphics pipeline. This section is, uh, is about the graphics pipeline. As the compute uh, pipelines are really light and doesn't have uh, the issue that uh, graphic pipelines have. A uh, pipeline consists about a lot of uh, settings that you can uh, can uh, can can set. This is all the different uh, settings that uh, Blender sets inside the pipeline. If any of those settings is changed, then the previous pipeline is, uh, is removed and a new pipeline needs to be created. So if you change the shader, new pipeline. If you change 
the blend mode to your frame buffer, new pipeline. If you change the frame buffer, new pipeline. There are extension in, 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 in the making. Uh, that changes this part in the in the Vulcan uh, and 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 it's really to support the case like that we have for uh, Blender. Sadly, these extensions are only supported by four percent of the of the platforms, and would always require a fallback, which is basically doing what Vulcan previously did. To reduce, uh, to reduce the uh, code complexity, um, we will stick for the first version just by recreating, uh, creating pipelines and, uh, uh, for the time being. In the upcoming period, I want to improve the graphics pipe, uh, pipe, pipeline. We got already some uh, working, uh, but it doesn't per per perform well. Uh, um, I, w I want to to, uh, to to start with re reducing uh, the uh, the uh, the number of pipelines that we have to create uh, during uh, uh, when we start up Blender. So this uh, I did account uh, from um, clicking the Blender ex executable to the first time we see the uh, the, the default cube. And it uses around thousand. It creates thousand uh, pipelines. Uh, most of those pipelines are similar or the same. Uh, so I definitely think that we can reduce uh, some of the pipelines there. Uh, Vulcan also has a pipeline cache, uh, but I would just want to add that for uh, specific cases that we can't handle uh, uh, up 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 front. It is better to. Uh, add caches only in places where where it matters. Um, that's for many things in uh, in uh, Blender. Um, one reason why we have such um, so many uh, of uh, recreations of of uh, Blender is that during uh, Blender 2.8. Uh, we created an immediate mode uh, uh, wrapper that could translate the old legacy OpenGL calls to the core profile GL calls. We call that IMM. And that's really uh, good for developers who not actually use uh, the uh, know-how to develop uh, to, to, towards the GPU mo uh, module, uh, but it also gives us now, uh, now uh, it now gives us a problem from okay we have to solve something there uh, IMM code is really uh, readable for users uh, for creating editors uh, to draw the user interface for a blender so there's they're, they're widely used so need a fun project Um, the Vulcan code uh, is already in main. Uh, what, you, what, what, you, what you saw, what, uh, the, what, what, what I did, that is just the, uh, the, the main branch of Blender. No, no special compilation options, just any uh, 4.1 uh, you, you can download and you start and you can start it with the Vulcan backend. I use an, iter an iterative uh, task approach find the problem, uh, discuss that problem, analyze that problem, write in PPR, and uh, get into com uh, contact and find out how to uh, uh, get that, uh, get stuff fixed. One tool that we always use from uh, from uh, from G, uh, GPU uh, uh, development is render doc so get familiar to with uh, render doc uh, would be a good starting point if you need some uh, some uh, uh, 
some some help with, with, with that. We are always available there uh, to, to, to help out. You can actually uh, 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 compile Blender with a compilation option with RenderDoc, which uh, does a more tightly integration between RenderDoc and, uh, and Blender. So you can actually uh, select the code which you want to uh, debug and see only that part in uh, the debugging tool. This is the end of the presentation part. So, thank <clears throat> you.